We're coming back with you today, so we can do a first real stream oriented towards the actual mechanics and everything to do in detail with the, the Unity stuff. Indeed, I do have a mic. Okay, cool, cool. Right. How do we build a map knowing that we don't start from zero? There's maybe something that we will do for an upcoming stream or maybe later. But here today, we really just wanted to show you the underside of Unity porting and what it entails. And we'll take the example of one map. How do we make one map? We're not going to go exactly on how it works and get into too many details, but let's have a look. So, Milo and Mazu, first of all, your question is, how do you start a map? When you st want to start work on a map, how, where do you get started from? Here we've uh, made people vote and they've chosen this map in particular, but and it has been the top map that people have um, selected and they wanted it to be animated so first of all what are your real steps first steps when you want to animate a map like this right for this type of map and generally other types of map what we do is uh, we choose the elements that we will animate on the map are not necessarily already picked and designed so when you look at the background here behind you everything that looks like the eye up the stars it's just one single map because it's not designed for animation to begin with <laughs> we can't ask graphists to be to add uh, specific details in one picture so that we can later animate it yeah because we didn't really foresee that we would animate stuff like this it was just picture based we've taken shortcuts and we've made it so that all all maps are one photoshop image to make it simple and easy so we can move on to more things and here we can't really go on a previous step that wasn't made. So we have to go back and cut the pieces that we want to animate. So here, looking at the map here in front of you, there are two images, really, the background and the one that you step on. So to animate anything, we had to reimagine everything and start from scratch. So we've thought about how we're going to do this before we get started. So for the animation, really, is that you that you do it or uh, who does it? Well, it depends. We have, uh, when we start a new zone, we will list what needs to be done, what will cut the workload into pieces, and then, <clears throat> and then the graphics team, either us or the graphics team, if it's not too complicated, will cut the pictures into an pieces that we want to animate, and then, and then we integrate all of this and start the animation. So the, the assign workload, and then it rolls. Let's go. <laughs> There's a, there's a handful of other things that we can use to manage stuff like this and enhance the way that they are integrated. It is an entire workshop. It's a big undertaking. And you, when you're a viewer, I'm sure you will find this interesting, what, how it looks like when they start actually getting to it and animating stuff. Uh, are there any background things that you want to go back on first or...? I want to see you in particular, what do you see in this map? Are there any things that you see or imagine or that you'd see imagine in the future? There are some evident things, of course. <laughs> uh, we're not going very fast, but I think we want to see something really quickly then. For example, in the background, there are elements that we would like to see move. Like we want to see the eye up guard move, the rocks, the shooting stars, all the vegetation and things like that. He's reading from the chat. There will be a demonstration on floating things in the background. So things do not move at the moment. So what 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 do we need to do in order to make them? <laughs> Uh, some guy in the chat is saying, can we animate the entire uh, island? It's like, well, well, we'll see how it goes. The wind, the wind is one of our biggest topics. R really, for the wind, you have to add it to your mind that there are very few uh, maps where we will not add wind. And here we're really talking about tens of thousands of maps where winds will come, which means everything within those maps will have to follow suit with the wind coming into them. So grass and stuff like that. Uh, and again, we're talking about tens of thousands of uh, maps. Hello, welcome. The Wabbit. Uh, 
So, but it's not impo it's difficult undertaking, but it's not impossible. So, out of everything that chat has proposed, what would you like to start with? Let's. If we had to recap, there is the god eye up in the background, uh, the stars and uh, shooting stars. We could also add some sort of mobile fog in the background. Should we start with that? Yeah, sure, sure. Let's start with the background. <laughs> Just to give you an idea, really, on the background, it's literally just one image. Look at this. <laughs> so we start from here and we animate. So we want to start, our goal is to take one image and pick the elements that are of interest to us and then start animate them and add in little things to them to judge them up. I think, uh, I think we're ready to go, yeah? Sure, 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 let's go, let's do it. Let's begin by importing. Stuff. <laughs> these are these are things that start that happen every now and then. These little mistakes. So we're gonna go and search for the little elements that are already cut up. So so we will start with the elements that are readily made, so we can just animate them, like picking up the easy thing. Uh, I want to reassure you that I'm not looking in emptiness. I have a second monitor right here on my left that I'm also using for this demonstration. So, we have the god here. We will put the constellation in front of him. We will recalibrate all of this at a later point. Don't worry about it. Ah. So we've, we're adding this little swoosh, foggy thing on top. And when we start uh, animating stuff, we will have less questions from the chat, because the, then they will see what, what's happening. So, on the mouse, they're having difficulties with the mouse and the... Thank you very much. They're having difficulties with the mouse and how la uh, labor-intensive it is to do a demonstration outside of the studio. So now we've grouped and regrouped all the elements that we have for... We're adding all the elements before we animate them. So we have to first add them, position them, and then make it so that the whole thing flows and is coherent before we move on to the next bit. Here it looks a bit well-positioned. They're not necessarily... Uh, as they were when they were fixed For on the maps if we need to make something uh, animated we will not hesitate to pick elements as difficult as they may be to animate them if it will enhance and make the um, the map better. yep that's the case uh, we don't just want to make things more alive we also really want it to be beautiful and enjoyable as an experience for people that play right so I've placed all the elements uh, in the map and I have replaced the old background that we have, just so you can see the comparison. And now you can see that we have space in the background, no longer has stars, no more life, there's less um, noise, it's more uniform. And from here, we will decide what, what can we imagine, what, can we, what was there in the beginning, and w in which direction can we take uh, this thing in the future. <clears throat> and one of the things that we had talked about, for example, is the god when you look at him in the in the in the old version he was always physically present in the map which is a bit strange because in uh, because in theory gods don't have much to do in life <laughs> and we had thought of the idea so it would be better if we could have <clears throat> the constellation more present and the god that just shows up and it's not a permanent feature in the map for good we could go on something like a, a mist or a fog or something more subtle that goes away and comes back. <clears throat> sure, 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 let's try this. Ah, he's apologizing for stopping a mid-run. He was, he was getting ideas, getting all creative and doing stuff and then he interrupted them. So, I've recovered the eye of God. And as you can see on the principle, on the beginning, I've added a color animation and you can see the effect of it. Now I'm making him alternate between a reddish color and his original, and quite, quite quick. And we can pick the pace. <laughs> I can tell you, if people have uh, are epileptic, please do say now, because we wouldn't want to cause you any harm. 
But in any case, there's always a moment where you do research and we just play with things to see where the the best rhythm is. We can go quick, we can go something sometimes very slow. Yeah. We can go gradual, test things as we go, colors, speeds, space, and then maybe just return to maybe decide on what the first color and the ending color is, the oscillation and their pace and speed. We are sort of playing and testing things to see how it goes. But this is part of the kind of tools that we have that are available to us so that we can have more freedom while uh, while creating so that we can start from whatever from rubbish attempts like the one we're doing right now and then end up on something that is quite good and aesthetically pleasing for you we call it the research phase so here we don't want any color animation for this eye up card but maybe what we could do is reduce the opacity in terms of time I'll, I'll show you the frequency so you can see exactly what i mean this is too quick but we can make him disappear altogether but what we really, really want is for it to be so very slowly oscillating, maybe 20% opacity. I think this is still quite fast. Yeah. But having said that, these are the base that we have pretty much all the time when we talk about with the artistic director. Uh, it's one thing is the animations don't have to jump into you immediately especially in your tactical mode we don't want them to aggro you we don't want them to be flashy in in your face we want it to be in the feel something in the background something that enhances the background you have to make the effort to see them rather than them jump at you and especially in Conan, which is the vibe is chill and calm <laughs> it's not in the vibe of the area to have uh, stroboscopes and flashy stuff <laughs> Next thing. Uh, <laughs> people in the studio, we bothering you? <laughs> Next, I'm gonna pick the background in space and try and, and make it move a bit just so we can make it more lively and then add effects on top of it in the front. Yeah, we're testing, we're testing it. If it looks horrible, don't worry about it, we're testing. It's part of the process. No, no, get, carry on, carry on. I don't know if we should explain the process, the technical process behind. Because uh, in reality, we have effects that are created by uh, the developer team. T4, Tech, whatever that is. So they prepare effects for us. And all we have to do is change the values. It allows us to do many things. When you say it like that, it, it's quite reductive when I put it like this. But when we put the effects together and manipulate the values, it gives us a lot of freedom to create some beautiful things. So people who aren't developers or, or have no affinity with this kind of things, uh, in essence, what we're trying to do, like with the fog here in the background, typically, it starts from a square image to which we apply a lot of deformations. It removes many technical realities when I put it like this, but this is the truth. We take a even if a square white image, uh, it's it's called a noise map, and we apply um, distortions to it, and then we decide what velocity, the time, on which space should the oscillation or changes have, and this allows us to have many parameters to tinker with, so we can have something that is reusable on multiple maps, because the idea in essence is to make sure that we have tools that evolve with time. So the more we advance in the porting of Unity, the more we are efficacious and uh, agile in manipulating and changing maps. So here's a, here's an image I wanna take, oh, here's an example I wanna give you. So the first moment that we had to attack Sophokia or anything to do with uh, sea borders, how, how do we do? how do we make it so that anything that is uh, neighboring the water works but also in Sufoke that all of it is so you get the idea we're trying to create some sort of canvases that can be adapted to the new zone that we want to animate later after and when we have tools the idea is to not have to erase everything if we unlock some new functionalities that the fact of being able to just integrate it to what we're already doing is a massive advantage 
and there's still some work to be done on mass production because we have so many maps. So we have to be able to automate the process at least to a minimum, otherwise it would be insane amount of work. I wanted to add something also, these elements, all these tools that are developed to help us animate stuff. What we want is, let's say, if future uh, maps or uh, elements come, we don't want to, to just be adaptation. We really, really want those new zones to be thought out around the potential animation that we want. So instead of just adding this like a... Uh, we just want it to be so that new... New, I don't know how to explain this very well. He's saying I don't know how to explain this very well, but we want them to synergize well to have animations that let you do things, whatever the map is. People are asking about the format of the images. Uh, they're using shaders, it is a very technical uh, term that is used in Unreal Engine and uh, Unity engines, which lets you apply some sort of distortions using a variety of parameters to just basic images. Whether you're using a sprite of something very simple, 2D one, or something that is textured, more complex, PNG, it doesn't matter what the format is or the complexity or simplicity of the file, you can still add your um, effects to it. So Unity, you will know, if you one day would like to test stuff like this and we're using Unity which is available to everyone that can test and try these things. You have to really like this. <laughs> but the node, I don't know, the node has the ability to give us uh, so much power and potential to try various things. But again, you have to really like testing because the technical and artistic thing that we're doing right now, it's not it's not the part that has the most uh, tutorials on the internet and video making in general. It is getting democratized and there's more content out there, but it's still in its infancy. So what color would you like for that little uh, flash of uh, light that we're making here, we're adding on the top? Would you like it to be uh, sharp? Would you like some red? Would you like something light? Hello? Shall we try something a bit green? It's not too bad. It's not too bad. Something greenish. This kind of green would work very well. But it's all about nuance, so you gotta get it right. <laughs> the saturation also works at times. <laughs> Let's just not go all the way to the extremes. Just go back on what I was doing just a bit earlier with. I've added a little bit of animation on the constellation here at the center, that little star that you can see there in his chest. I've added a little flickering that is very light. Let's see if I speed it up what it looks like. So let's add something. Let's simulate something here. Let's see what happens when a texture generates some light. Let's go in excess to see what it looks like. No, no, not speed. That was a good type of excess, but that wasn't what we wanted. Ah, this is what it looks like when we really bump it up to the absolute maximum. <laughs> you can see the direction it's taken. <laughs> you see what these things are. And this is why you have to be very delicate and use them with uh, parsimony. Yeah. It's the past process that is exciting. But this bit right here, yeah, it's a hit and miss. We can add something that will create in. Uh, uh, we could make something that, in junction with the most luminous bits of the map, can create some more light. I don't know what that means. Uh, this can hurt the eye. Just so we can really see. Let's crank it up. Let's crank it up to the maximum. So we've said it. This is not the best kind of life for someone that has epilepsy, please. <laughs> now, I can also reduce the speed so it's not too annoying. Ah, this is IOP. When you see this stuff, ah, you get IOP immediately. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, what the hell are they doing? So globally, we are so free to try many things like the light diffusion, reduce it. We have a lot of leeway, which makes it more interesting for any sort of creative ideas. You can do a lot of things with the tools that we have now, that we did not have in the past. 
We're not gonna make zaps glow like that and give everyone uh, strokes. <laughs> uh, this is reminding me of uh, shooter games where somebody throws a flashbang and you're immediately dazed. We could do that with an IOP. Call it the Kanye West IOP. French humor. <laughs> yeah, we are getting a lot of inspiration, but there's a lot we can do now. Let's just stay on Encarnum here. So here, initially, we could try to synchronize the stars with the apparition, with the coming of uh, the IOP god in the background. Synchronize his, up, uh, his reveal with the light starting to flicker. Hmm. Completely missed it. Ah, this is much better. <laughs> so, I had planned something. And I thought it would be fun if his eyes would um, flicker a lot more than the rest of his body. Because I hope to have an empty look. And let's see what... what and it always makes me laugh. So let's see what that gives. What it looks like. Well... It, Really, we can create, we can um, remove parts of a hole and ask that part to be more shiny or add uh, specific effects or make it act differently, irrespective of the big hole. He saw a funny question on the chat. Whoa, it's a big technical question. Is um, the data set by a map or by... Some We've talked about it not very recently about lag. We're, try we're starting to do big optimization um, phases just because we've seen that the historical architecture was absolutely horrendous and the way it interacts with the RAM, your actual RAM and how it goes to collect elements for a map. So we're trying to work on things like that to make it more optimal. And generally, it wouldn't be 100% moving away from what we have now, but it will be something in the, in the middle. But that was a very beautiful, uh, beautiful technical question. I did well to catch and answer it. <clears throat> I don't know how we can show because there's so many different uh, effects. But here in the background, for example, it will be the uh, color animation and the shining misses. And also for this light effect that I'm moving right now, it might be some sort of distortion that we can give it just to simulate the movement in space because we want it to stay on the eye of God but we want it to also fluctuate to give it a sort of energy flow and create the uh, illusion of mobility as if he's breathing or something I'm seeing a lot, uh, I'm getting this technical question in the chat, how many maps do we have globally in the, in the game? we have about 13k, 13,000 maps generally, fixed maps and some uh, uh, mob fights uh, so like some hidden maps or technical fights like uh, Emerald or whatever uh, adds another 2,000 so we have about 15,000 and the the guy with the cap is thinking more like 17,000 yeah but the, uh, in essence it's tens of thousands there's a lot of work to be done to animate all of those just to give you an order of magnitude of what we are having to deal with so the other elements we wanted to add if you have any ideas just Check them in the chat. These are elements I've ne not yet worked with, but I was thinking of some sort of clouds or something that moves like a fog. If we want to do some disco in Carnum, well, yeah, there, there are ways to add it with flashing red lights. <laughs> we have lots of rave parties in Astro. Maybe we could bring that as well. A Catholic City as well. And in Carnum as well. Sorry, 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 sorry. Just trying to remove chat so you can see everything. These are things that we can suggest now with the animation potential that we have. Give Twitch chat. So, in the past, when you got close to a... Um, uh, when you got close to um, lava, it was... We had to do it pictographically. I don't know what that means. So now we don't need to change the map as well. We can just add uh, effects. So you can get ashes that float and then fall on the map. And we can add environmental effects that enhance things instead of taking the picture and trying to make it do the thing. So now we're in a frame of adding elements to a photo rather than doing things to the photo. So here there are so many things that we could add. 
to have a a really nice synchronized result so we can make the uh, the reveal of the IOP and the pulse inside his chest to make them synchronize and appear at the same time. These are really really tiny details that can take hours. This is why we spend lots of time on every single map. In every video game production, one of the best skills to have that I have to deal with is to ask your artist to stop. <laughs> And this is what I keep telling everyone. As there's a correlation between the time you spend working on something and the number of things that you see that can be modified and things that you want to change and do something about. So here we, we are having tools that develop every now and then that just come to our attention and then we think, right, let's go back to the previous map and change things. And then dislike the fact that we could have done it much faster had we just had this so in the past. Yeah, this map is clearly lacking in stars. The right side is completely empty. So we have some shaders that we had earlier, we've talked about. But we also have particles with multiple options. But now, go ahead, how about you take on this bit? So the difference here is uh, the particles, we don't put them on an element that it already exists like a shader. We can add shaders on top of particles, but we're getting too much into the details. But the particles in themselves, they're like sprites that we can generate with plethora of parameters. And then we can give each one of their value, uh, the parameters a value. Let me just do an example right now with the stars. So this is the generator. This is what it looks like. This is a base particle. It's a beautiful one that you will see in Unity. <laughs> White squares everywhere, whatever you go. <laughs> So do you see that we can, this is our texture, default texture is the tofus. I'll leave it like this until we get the optimal setting for the stars because I don't need to have the star texture itself in order to simulate it. <laughs> Just rest assured, you will not be seeing uh, flashing tofus like this everywhere you go. <laughs> so the, uh, the module is telling us that it is getting propagated from a central point outward and we can we can make them appear in a rectangle that will sort of cover the entire map and we will put them on the background. So in reality, we can ask our particles or whatever element that we apply in the game to, to either go behind the character or, or that the character can pass around it just like trees and stuff like that, you can walk behind them. Or it could be all the way to the background or all the way to the foreground. So here for the tofus, which are our stars, they won't be long. They won't be tofus for long. We can keep them, but we won't. Here what we want is for them to be completely be at the background of any element that you can interact with. They're bad trip in there in the back, the guy that's flipped. <laughs> It would be hilarious to go to Pandal and see flying tofu everywhere. <laughs> it's not much more complex than this at the end to make stars that can stay flicker. I just thought I'd mention, these are particles that are quite simple. It, as long as we uh, abide by certain general rules, like have a fixed parameter where we are making it, have a fixed duration, and know exactly whether it's in the background or the foreground. And here, to their, uh, uh, they're popping up, we can add a curve for stars. It might be interesting having this effect, but what we could do is change the curve so that they, 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 they appear very slowly and softly rather than... Here, for example, there are some t certain parameters that you shouldn't apply. There are some parameters that the moment you move a tiny little increment, you get massive changes. He's reading funny comments in the chat. It would be more logical. Though. So it is one of the big decisions that we have to contend with pretty much all the time is, are we going to put this element in a shader, in particles, or what sorts of um, thing? it will be. Is it something that will be fixed in this map? Is it something that we will want to port and use in different maps? Is it something that is valid across all of them? So for every problem, you could have up to three 
uh, three um, technical problems to solve for. And I'm saying three because shaders, particles, and animation. So for example, in the true fair, when you have the... Um, these are things that we will have insanely uh, difficult time trying to create it with the three elements that we have. But it will be... It, it, it is feasible, but not without a massive uh, time commitment. We will have to get specialists in to whose job it is to just dedicate uh, their hours to just that one animation. Uh, whereas here, we, ha we have to coordinate with the other teams, like uh, the team that deals with pictography. That we need to define exactly what sorts of animation we do. We do it ourselves, do we hire people externally? Is it too complex for us to handle? Or can we just have a little workout for it? Ah, so we want, uh, what somebody talked about performance here and he wants that uh, we have, uh, if you play a max setting, you want they want you to have the best possible visibility, the best possible experience uh, and where you don't necessarily have a 3090 or 4090. We want you to be able to run it on a laptop and things like that. So we're very mindful of things like that. We want to have at least the same performance between Flash and Unity so that everyone, nobody's alienated. We don't want you to sort of go and upgrade before. We can't produce uh, we can't produce a Unity version that is less performant than the previous one. But at the same time, we want... Whereas... Uh, so for people who play with very few accounts, you will have insane performances that deviate from Flash. Whereas for people who do play multi-accounts, we keep them in mind so that at least they can have, if not better, at least an equal experience to the one that they have now. And that's the problem that we're doing, working now. We are in the R&D phase of client optimization for people who play multiple uh, accounts so that they don't compromise on quality as well. Where are we there now? The stars are coming along nicely. It's quite light. We could ramp up to make them more visible. But it, it's already quite cool. We can change the quantity, the size, the rotation. We can make them backflips. <laughs> we could add shooting stars as well. Someone's in the chat asking, could we have a shooting star or move on to something else? People are sick of this. But <laughs> a little shooting star every now and then. Go, let's go. Come on. Uh, go on. Let's do a uh, a shooting tofu. Might be better than an actual... Uh <laughs> we can make them fly. Let's make it fly, this little tofu. I think it's a much better idea than uh, a shooting star. Uh, this shows you some other... Um, the particle system allows far too many things and you're seeing the potential and power that it allows us. <coughs> so the rock, for example, that was in the background, you show that stars are passing in front of it. So now, quick and easy, we will just replace it with a similar rock that is in front of it. We can keep it, we can change uh, the rock so that it's always in the foreground, we could animate it, we can change the color scheme so that it marries the background a bit better. We can make it levitate as well, like hover up and down. So, the flying tofus. <laughs> it's an entire project. At least one shooting, uh, <laughs> one shooting tofu. Just so we can see what it looks like. So for this module, you've seen it earlier, we can give it a different kind of speed and range to work in. <clears throat> Just like earlier, we will show, change the area of apparition. We don't want tofus that just fly all over the place. It will be a more controlled thing. So it takes a bit of time as well. We don't want to do a... Uh, <clears throat> Oh. We want something that shoots across the map from end to end. So maybe a curve. What is possible as well is to add meteors that crash on the area.
I will make one every two seconds appear. One every second so we can see better. This looks a lot like a, a tofu propeller than anything else. <laughs> we have a lot of parameters with which to play. Like we can gravity them so they have a curb. The particles fall. The tofu cannons. We can add and apply shaders on the particles after we've set them in place and in motion. Which maybe we could add this as a little mini game for the true. We can change the form of the tofus, we can change the colors depending on their speed, things like that. We have a lot more options that we have now. These are called trails where we generate a particle that will follow the essential particle on which they are generated and you can then decide on the speed, the length, the duration of life. So it's with this basis right here that we've just showed you and explained that we will create comets, shooting stars, rain for example, uh, storms. Uh, it's completely ridiculously overpowered. I'm glad we found this as a technique that we can use for other things that we never thought about like cranes and storms. We start with things every now and then and it creates effects that work so well that we and it just sticks and we start using them on other things because it's f simpler or easier to deploy elsewhere. So one of the things that we thought about it at one point is in the past we had a machina under the snow but in the future, we would love to add some, uh, not, not, not seasons fully, but uh, like dynamic weather. It would be good to add, no, 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 I'm saying too much, I don't want to commit to anything here today. <laughs> uh, a day and night cycle, that's not, that's not in the making. We had already done tests on some sort of areas, like uh, in cities, where like Bonta, it was really stylish. The only thing is time. We prefer to focus on actually doing the entirety of the maps and then move on to those little tiny details like day and night. We really want, we do want to add things like that. We're committed to doing things like that, but we're focusing on the essential for now. <laughs> Someone's saying, can you guess what class he plays? The guy who's doing the animation. Sadi. But yeah, it would be awesome to be able to create maps for some events during which uh, a sort of area would have a different weather. Not necessarily dynamic, but more of a, an event type of weather. It's like snow and things like that. <laughs> just don't... Someone made the joke in chat, just do not add the uh, France's weather because it's rubbish all the time. <laughs> it, it's good enough suffering in real life, we don't want it to follow us in the game as well. But in the future, if we wanted to add rain to Ashu, for example, that would be something that is completely doable because we have the technology for it right now. Um, I wanted to add some sort of dust behind it to simulate that effect that we're desiring. Add a little bit of dust so that it makes it a l a less... just to see like a sort of burst that happens every one and a half minute, every three minutes. But the time to configure things like that... when we have special effects like these, that it might be an hour and a half, two hours, uh, if... It has to show up every time so we can see the parameters we're working with and the effects. But yeah. It <laughs> if, it, if it's something heavy like a flying tofu that explodes in the background, we want that to be infrequent. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. It can spiral very quickly if you add effects in test phase that are this big, this scaled. Yeah, maybe you make them a less luminous. Ah, one thing that we do generally when we have a preset, I mean, a particle that works really well, is that we can save it. 
as in create files and save them so that we can reuse them as a basis to start something or just to replicate it en masse on uh, different maps of the same area, for example. So things like um, the comets, rain, all these things will have various uh, uh, types, tests that we have folders that we have, like samples that we've worked with because we've, we've done it in the, po in the past and we could just reuse them. Now we're too neck deep into this tofu thing now, but it is designed to show you how it's done. Uh, there are other things that we could do on uh, less form than defined uh, animations. So for example, we could just add little distortion inside the animation. We could add, we could even give them a different life uh, span so that they don't die at the same time or they could have different speeds. It gives us an incredible amount of leeway as far as creativity goes. His reading, uh, his reading chat. Someone in the chat is talking about their neighbor. He's reminded by the stuff they throw in his garden with this tofu reminded him of that. <laughs> ah, this is so much better already. I'm imagining someone in the left map, a, a crazy guy with a cannon that is shooting tofus all over the place. It must be Ganymede. <laughs> this is why. This is why in his tower he's drawing tofus, we've come full circle. <laughs> he's trying to keep productive. It's... it's... We will ask designers for shooting stars, but we'll have to also be mindful of um, the copyright. We could add... Could we add some fumes behind the tofu? So just that dust you've created in the back, are you just able to change it into something else? We could even make it so that if it hits the left rock, it explodes. This is how modular and uh, flexible this new design tool is. <laughs> I'm gonna keep my ideas to myself. <laughs> Whee! Here we have feathers in the back instead of... Uh, we can make it generate smaller tofus behind it. Or uh, eggs, if you want. And pretend that's what's giving it the speed. You can stand on the corner of the map and... Uh, they're just joking. Stay focused. Stay focused there, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I hear the feathers are not moving so it's a bit disgusting maybe we could add a noise we're on the system particles from unity here oh wow so we have so many tools that have uh, appeared internally that we can use to do adaptations so right now, the whole architecture we're going forward with is based around these little um, uh, particles because it's highly adaptable and it lets us do so many modifications and lets us be independent with our creativity real time. Despite uh, the incessant LD request that we're getting, mm. every day technically we could find a new idea of something to add to the tool. And we need this to add to the tool so we can add this effect, but it won't it won't happen immediately, sadly. Yeah, this is what we do with priority. We juggle priorities of uh, the demands of the work. Can we, can we leave these tofus in rest, please, for now? <laughs> what I can import right now is something from Zelorium. When I've made the map, I have added a little type of uh, comets, like a shooting star, because it vaguely resembles what we're doing here. Let me see if I can, uh, but to find them in the middle of all the folders, it might be a bit tricky. So he's saying essentially he's already done something res that resembles. Oh wow, we're seeing their files now. <laughs> wow. Oh my god, Alan. So. Ha <laughs> ha
uh, when I say uh, soon, something's happening very soon to see how we will um, adapt for the office. But in the meantime, we have something really, really cool that has pleased a lot of people that we have seen, especially on the client side, who were pleased to see a big uh, a value added on the perf. I don't know what perf is in this sense. We have a lot of things to show you that are satisfying, but the research and development is really, really, really happening internally. And we don't want to show you that because it's not presentable yet. But we have advanced a lot on this front and it's something that we'll come back to you about very, very shortly. Oh, will it be a paid version? If you want us, we want you to implement whatever that thing perf is. We want to look at the technical side, the feasibility and the formula to make it work first of all, before we even talk about implementation and uh, talk about the economics of it payment or whatever we can talk about this later because so far we're purely focused on the technical aspect and nothing else oh i really like this question a question for the three of you what is your favorite boss as far as animation visual graphic things not gameplay ambience what is your favorite essentially what is your favorite boss as far as aesthetics and animation I really, really like the Sophokia extension, the Abysses, so sub -Sophokia. I like Dantinia, for example. It's not very complicated. And to find trides, it's a bit of hassle, but there's usually just the one. But also, in terms of graphics, oh, I really think that the sub -Sophokia areas are... Uh, strangely, I find them really cool. <laughs> and you, Milu? I had not expected the question. I wouldn't know what to say just like that on the fly. I really, really like Sir Momor. That, um, well, that we've released very recently. But otherwise, I'm not a player that had done too many of the big bosses. I'm what you would know in the community as a noob. <laughs> I really like to play for the vibes and to chill and the social aspect more so than the try hard and doing hard stuff. Mia from my side, two have uh, sprung to mind that have coriander sticks to my mind because I tried it so many times in the past. There were so many attempts and I remember one last Oh, I remember one attempt where I've uh, leak pied one of those mobs that rolls everyone back and then oh, trauma, trauma, trauma. Yeah, so Coriander was horrendous back in the time. And more recently, even though it's been a few years now, but the Zack, the, the Zack area, I really, really liked it. I've played the game all the way up to 200 in a close combat team. And you can imagine the Zack close combat is inferno. It's horrendous. Huh? I really, really like the fantasy around the... Um, uh, whatever the... The, what, what are they called? The um, mobs in the area. Yeah. That's something that I dream of seeing anime. Maybe we'll do it very soon, who knows? Uh, the question is bugging me right now. I want to see Ephedria because I'm biased. I think he worked on it. Belladonna. It's really, really cool, I find, yeah. But it's super hard, the boss. Belladonna area is really cool. And yeah, and I th I'm thinking with the animated areas, it will be. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Another tangent I would like to go on right now, which is before that, in the past, we were thinking about the aspect of getting blocked uh, when you when you go to tactical mode. We don't have to get preoccupied as much with um, the the aspect of. I don't know what he's saying here. Uh, so we're trying to affect a bigger correlation between the map, how it looks like when you're walking in outside and when you start the fight. So the graphic separation will be nice to see. Like for example, the Ephidria one, we wanted to go back on the uh, gameplay aspect because the mobs are violent, they could one-shot you. So it's not just graphics redesigns. Somebody's asking a technical question about Unity source code and he's saying, yeah, it's open source. Most of com most companies work on big projects with many, many people that are usually based around uh, whether it's Unreal Engine or Unity work on something 
and they usually share a technical base across all the platform but as every single project develops uh, every project develops it gains its own uh, technicalities and then you end up with a, a chimera like a, a big congregation of codes that are interlaced over the time even for noobs I can tell you the uh, example of Naughty Dogs, Ubisoft and other big companies the motors that they use are usually on real engine from the past not necessarily 15 or 20 years but that tells you the tech has evolved you start on a small basis but you eventually creep up and have something massive a behemoth of a code yeah what do we go on next it's uh, the floating rock is something that has uh, crept up a lot on chat. Ah, adding adding a little life to the to the rocks makes it more alive quickly. Shall we say the rocks followed by wind and everything else that moves with the wind? So what we can do with the rocks is uh, rather simple. I've slowed I've slowed the tofu so you're not visually bugged. This it's too much. <laughs> It's too much. We can say bye to the tofus as well while we focus on something else. So for the rocks, what we can do is we give them a translation uh, on which axis we want them to bob. So either horizontal, north, south, or the direction of the bobbin. We'll start with something strong so you can see the effect. And then what we can do is add some noise to create some sort of randomness in the movement that they have. I don't have the parameter in my head now. I'll just move my camera. The rocks are a bit violent. So here we join back that team we've discussed earlier of um, trying things very, very slowly, as we've said earlier with the IOP guard, which has ripped off the retinas from a, f a handful of people. But we always want to work with the extreme so we get the effect and get the idea. What is too much? Was it not too much? Before we find the right level of animation. Ah. So when we come to a new zone that we haven't animated yet, there is a research phase on the effect that we want to, to operate. Including the pictographs, the pictos that we have to cut back to create elements and add winds as well. Clearly. I've moved it. Shall we cancel the tofus and remove them out of the way? Uh, let's go back on the real, real build of the map. So now, here we have a rock that bobs very gently. You can see it if you focus. The noise is a bit violent, but if when we find a parameter that we like, we, we save it. And we can copy it and apply it to elements on the same card or other cards if if we want. But what? But in order to get a floaty rock that flows really really well, it takes time. This is a bit too much for my taste, but it will do for now because you get the idea. We have to put it on top of other elements now. So let's put the small rock to the right as well. So he has just copied and pasted the effect on the tiny little rock. So they both move in unison right now. This is what he meant by if we like an effect, we can save it and then apply it. We can move every single item in the map here independently. So it can have its own motion or its own effect or whatever. So we had this picto here, the rock. Where visually, you can see little packs of rocks that are separated from the rest that looked like they were slightly floaty. So this is where we go to the graphists and ask them to cut things like that so that we could uh, reanimate separate parts independently. So now you can see we have three elements. Instead of one big image of a pile of rocks, you now have uh, chunks of rocks, one picture, decompose so you can add a little animation to the top two or the bottom one or whatever so we move the old one and we add a random floater to it 
I should have done that for the other rocks because they're synchronized, which is terrible. <laughs> this is terrible. We want them to act independently. Unless they do... <laughs> Unless there's an effect coming from Astro from underneath. I see people that are worried about the tofus. We're just hiding them very quickly while we work. It's He's always present in our heart in the map, but we had to deactivate because it was too noisy and it's, <laughs> it's too much to work on the map with floating tofus. <laughs> so typically with the animations that we do now for you while doing tests we don't want them to be too flashy or too hardcore so they don't tire your eyes these are just tests anyway right what else could we do wind we could do the trees knowing that I don't know, I might be putting you on the spot, but I don't know. Could we do um, uh, leaf particles? Could, could we boil down the tree to that granular level? Well, I hadn't expected stuff like that, but I think we have... We already have we have ways of doing it. And the other guy's saying that they have little precepts that they've already made, little concepts they've saved. So the tofu was just to show the logic behind. It's not something that we will keep in the game for now, or we will apply. It's just to show you how we make them. There are also some uh, animation details that I wanted to tell you about. If we want to make a, um, if we want to make a leaf drop, if we want a leaf to drop or fly down, do a little loop, and but we don't have any problem with things like that. Bringing things down to that granular level, the tools are mm. right. So let's just first of all see the wind and its effect on. Uh, you have to imagine that trees were a big project where, where our graphics had to cut them out from the image because if you remember before that it was um, just one image so they had to cut elements and apply them on top of the image so they can animate them independently and the lady who did the work uh, knows of at least a thousand variety of trees that she had to independently cut so what we know about Dofus 2, it was, uh, he's, he's restating re that. So everything from the rocks, the trees, the leaves, everything aside from the nodes were part of that one picture because they weren't designed initially to be animated later on. So when we say uh, 10,000 trees, we're talking about every tree uh, per image had to be cut, removed. And if you want to animate the leaves, you had to separate that from the image as well. So the trees were one piece and we didn't really have a way to animate them because it was one image, you animate the image or nothing. Uh, yeah, so the tree moves, um, behaves differently depending on where the wind is and how hard it is as opposed to the rest of the map. So add in the wind. So let's see what happens if you add wind to a um, tree that hasn't been cut from the rest of the image. Mm. So when you cut things, you want to go as granular as possible so you have multiple elements, so you can animate things separately. So if you change the speed of the wind, you want the tree to um, behave differently from the leaves, for example. So you have to have those elements independent. So we at least get to decide how windy we want it to be and then just decide on that parameter and everything else follows suit and moves accordingly. So there used to be a deformation for the entire tree in the past. Oh. So on the wind project, what we wanted to do is first of all develop the wind and also cut the trees into multiple elements, prepare the trees. Down. So as you can see here in the image, it's not it's not amazing if this is what the what we proposed as an animation <laughs> it's made of rubber and it's struggling so much <laughs> so we had to make the decision we have to cut literally every piece and aspect that makes the tree one thing that is important to differentiate is we have various trees we have uh, spiky ones even of the same type you had um, different ones with multiple 
with multiple elements on them. So what we wanted is to arrive at a method where when you apply wind, regardless of the nature of the tree and that, they all sort of behave accordingly. So it took many, many months of prep to automate everything at the level of uh, the wind. At least just for the trees so far, which we have done. So it, we are working on them for the plants, but for the trees, everything has been cut, everything has been prepped. So the interaction with wind is already sorted. I'm seeing a question that is bothering me right now. What about the, um, the trees that you can cut? Uh, so the trees that you can interact with, we would love to animate them as well, but we have no idea about the feasibility of it because it's complex. It's uh, because it lives at the junction of LD and the gameplay. I think it's designed and um, the gameplay, like a, a node that you... So what we want is some evolution on uh, the resource that you can farm and things like that. There's so many questions like these that we think about because of what the opportunity, but because of what Unity allows us to do. These are very heavily technical things that um, have technical things behind it. So here we've shown you the logic that lets you, because everything has been cut. Like, like now, look, he, he pressed the tree. You can see every single element separately there on the right side. So he can pick every single element, like even the leaves on the top left, the leaves on the right, the leaves in the middle, each one behaves independently. So you can give it, uh, you can give it a command independently. So now the tree is taking a real hit with the wind, but the leaves are not. So you can get that level of granular control about every element of a tree, which is just a groupment of uh, items. So here we can uh, really dictate the force of the wind on every single element that makes a tree and arrive at a re result that looks a bit like that. <laughs> a guy saying just chuck in the tofus again and call it a day, release it now, it's ready. <laughs> ah, the visual glitch, can you add, can you add those? Yeah, yeah, we can add so many of those. We have already uh, put some really serious work into glitch effects and stuff like that for Zelorium because it was the perfect excuses in uh, area where to try him. But it's something that we are uh, working on, something in the back of my mind. So for trees, you can imagine that we had so many uh, case scenarios where it was doing uh, wonky loopings at the start and end of the animation. So the animation we're talking about right now on the tree, we can apply it on pretty much every element you see in the photo. So this wind system that we've applied, um, the idea behind it is that it could be adaptable from area to area. So we can animate everything. He's showing how you can animate the sword as well. It looks weird, but yeah. I've seen a question earlier. Yes, trees can be synchronized if there's a big gush of wind or gust of wind. Oh, you will be able to see trees move uh, in sequence as the wind reaches them. Just like you s if you think about it, not all trees move at the same time when there is a gust of wind outside. It's literally as soon as the wind reaches and interacts with the item that it moves in real life. So we want to keep that real piece. We want it to interact when the wind reaches it. And here we're going to show you an illustration of uh, the point that we're making right now. I think they're going to pass wind and show you how the first ones to get hit with it will move first and the others will wait. Oop, what happened now? Oop, that's behind the scenes. The, <laughs> the office back room. <laughs> so, is your wind uh, mono-directional? Uh, yes. Technically, there are there are some maps where we could add more, but it stays. It remains parameters that we can play on in the long term and experiment with. But so far, it's monodirectional because it's easier that way. Globally, the wind goes. Winds uh, generally, the wind moves in one direction because of this technical thing. Because we want everything to be coherent, so the movement of everything to be in one direction, and we don't want it to be chaotic and conserve a type of movement logic in the map. Uh, 
Oh, the guy is asking in the chat, can you animate the shadow of something on the floor, like a tree or something like that? He said yes. You can add shadow, create a distance, and then create an effect that also uh, affects the... Um, so essentially you can add shadows and make sure that they are animated according to the movement of the object that they're mim mimicking or mirroring. I don't understand why we're not seeing the gust of wind. Ah, you can see the wave now. This is how it will be. Very flexible wheat, but that's the idea. Let's speed that up a bit. So whoa, 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 easy. easy. <laughs> this is, he's playing with the wind speed right now. You can see. Mm, you can see the speed of movement and how uniform it is when he changes the wind speed in the map. Oh wow, uh, the guy is asking, will there be any elements that are generated by your movement in the map and your interaction with the map? He said, yeah, there will be steps if you step on mud. There is a question of how far we're going to take this, but there will be yeah, there will be uh, things that we're implementing already we're working on, like the size of your step, of your foot on the mud, the, on the mud, depending on what class you're playing. Uh, if you walk on water and things like that, will you leave traces behind you? But yeah, these are a lot of elements we're thinking about. But we're, we haven't found the scale of we're going all in or just a little taste. So now you're getting a taste of what the LDs get in on a daily so when you start a map yes nothing moves everything is and the more you go the more mobile the map is the more uh, animated it is and similarly on an entire area what happens when you apply effects like that look at look at the shadows moving in the background so sometimes in one day you can work on five six maps that are mm, optimal and most of the rest of the area that is very well animated because some things are shared across uh, areas it's december um the the question they're asking here is I, i've completely missed it i'm not going to completely tell you or give you promises on the unity release date but we have already done a lot of tests on things like um, rain, winds, it's something that we have in mind. We will see when we release it. December, I'm trying to type and... <laughs> uh, here, you can see here on the detail set that we can change uh, the size of the shadow. Uh, the, the mobility of it on the map, we can add effects to it, like the fade in, fade out. He's reading a question. Can you have cracks on the floor extend? So we have a problem here. When does it stop? And when does it go back to its initial, uh, its initial position? So what you need to know is when you leave a map, the whole animation is reset. So we could do it so that there's a crack on the floor that gets deeper the longer you stay on the map. But in any case, the moment you leave and come back, the animation will have to restart and then eventually go back to what it was. Could we have, the question somebody's asking is, uh, could we have all, everything that you're doing right here, the animations and stuff like that, details of the area and things like that, could you have it on the client side so we can have it on our computers, let our computers generate it, so that what we're doing with the server is purely just go fish the information, communicate with the server about the gameplay and command. Everything that you see is client side. But the information is coming from the server side and we need to keep it like that because sometimes we might add snow on an event or things like that. We don't want it to be, um, to lack uniformity. This is all, this is opti stuff. We're talking about end optimization. We're still working on the essential graphics. The map is quite animated now. It's a lot of movement, Milo. 
I've added a little bit of wind on certain uh, plants more than others. You can see that stroboscope effect coming from the outer space. You can see the stars that are quite flashing. You can see the, uh, the god, the silhouette that amplifies and then fades out the stars on him. Now, about that floating rock that melts into the image better, that gives the impression of movement on the right side. We should go back to that. Ah, uh, the, the stream that we see here is more um, vivid in terms of colors because they see something different on the screen in front of them and we're getting something completely different. What we could also do is... Uh, why is he whispering? We can spend a lot of time on every map adding little elements here and there. We want the sword, for example, to... I don't know. We, it looks like eyes. Why, why don't we add little white halos around it to enhance it? Why don't we make the eye up dance? We get lots of questions like that to show you that we can spend hours on details like this. So on this map right here, we've chosen a color scheme of blue, green, purple. I have water. Uh, we're going to enhance the um, the intensity of it just so you can see the effect of it, the light that is. So here, if I want to make the light I've added completely. This is cy cyclical, but we can make it so that it's not cyclical. It appears, disappears, but here, I think we've not done that yet, but we've added the same way we have added, now that we've added wind, we can make the wind appear by adding little particles like um, dust, like pollen to make it appear. Yeah. It's, it's, it's similar to what we've done earlier. Something that we talk about a lot. Uh, something that we talk about a lot is we don't want to have hypercharged maps. Uh, there will be a standard that will be applied in the game to make it so that all maps have a minimum animation, but have others that can scale up. Let's take an example. Wind and uh, movement of trees and plants, it will be everywhere. But there will be some areas that will be incredible, like Shrambad, which we have uh, managed to show you before, which had a lot of different effects with uh, uh, storms, movements, and stuff like that. We have shown you some dungeons as well. They will generally have uh, animations clo proper to them, because we'll, we'll eventually have to spend a lot of time in dungeons, so we want you to have a pleasant time while you're there. So we won't go from no animations to loads of anim- there will always be some sort of minimum animation. So the time we will go from too much to little, it's the uh, exploration phase in the dungeon and the fight itself. So the fight, because it might be hard and quite tedious it would be a bit annoying to have too many animations inside the fan so at that level we might focus them on the edges of the map and make them a bit discreet so so as to not disturb your focus and let you remain in the fight but we will apply this uh, principle about everywhere on the so now we are on a very white map So if I know the process very well, we will darken the map and then add some uh, light variation. Not necessarily to simulate clouds. M maybe, maybe, maybe we could simulate a uh, different intensity, like uh, create variation with things like uh, the sun rays and things like that. I'm emphasizing this just to show you the effect we're talking about. The idea here is to do little... Um, Batches that can move in the sense of the map. Just to sort of simulate the passage of time. Here you can start understanding that having, having uh, shadows like these on the maps can give you this impression that a cloud is passing by on top of the map. 
So you can have some uh, elements that move across the map and simulate objects that fly on top of it, which can be very, very interesting. It's a bit strong, but at least you can see on the stream. I've even augmented the uh, uh, the intensity so it can get the full effect. So. <laughs> what clouds are you simulating right now in outer space? <laughs> We're just giving you the idea really of all the kind of things that we can add on a map. And I hope that we've done a general pass on top of things like that. We can uh we can um parameter things so that vivid colors aren't completely roasted, they can still be uh, visible. We've talked about the little uh, rock earlier, Let's. how about we add a little animation to it? I really, really like this question. The games. Ah, the level designers and the... Are they all very familiar with the lore, with the story and stuff? Um, not necessarily all of it, but it really, really helps in terms of knowing what work we're doing, what the bigger picture is. On the decor, I don't know that there is a an enormous knowledge to have at that level. But the question really is, are there any elements that you pay attention, if there are any crucial elements like that, that we will need to pay special attention to, they will be communicated so that there's coherence and that they're not missed. So this question comes back very quickly. Once the first concepts are made, we have to discuss these elements before we start working on them. So for example, like Pandala, you want to have the right level of trees, the right kind of trees as well. There are also some uh, old... Uh, we, we also have some elements that are old and not pertain to the lore or the game. They're part of the history of the game itself, like a statue of something. And these are communicated to the team uh, so that they are added, but there is not a um, necessarily a need to be a grand master of lore in order to be a good designer. There's something else that we wanted to cut back. So the tavern, or the sidekick tavern, where we had to create a map where all the sidekicks would be created. So here we were more in collaboration with game designers that were telling us really the lore of every character and the relationship between each one and the other. So we could have a little effort into the theme, their characters, their lore, and have create a little narrative that you can see on the map that brings back. So for example, Ectope, he lives in a crypt and has a, a hammer. So in front of him, there are loads of holes and in his dialogue, for example, I'm not even sure. But these mini narratives that pertain to the lore and story that we can have with the designers before we make things like that. Question about animation. Ah, uh, he's asking, somebody in the chat is asking, is this fluidity, is this fluidity going to be similar to the one? Is it going to be as fried or as cooked as this when you release the game? It's like, no, 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 no. Uh, it's just because we are on the engine doing modifications and we are also streaming at the same time, so using resources towards uh, showing you what we're doing. What is this aberration? <laughs> this is what happens if you spend too much time in a, an Astrobe Inn or Pandala. <laughs> like I said earlier, so on Pandala, it, you could have deformations on the entire screen and it wouldn't be completely bizarre. Oh, what about, oh, here's a cool idea. What about when you go drunk on the Panda? Could you add little alteration or little fry up the image to reflect the drunk, uh, the cr a chromatic reflection of his state of mind. I saw a question earlier about synchronization between uh, elements. Like here, we have the rays and the synchronization of it on the ground. Because we place them manually on a map, uh, in order to synchronize them, something that happens generally in a map is complex. It is doable, but it's uh, we have to break our heads with it, and it takes a lot of time. But for a total immersion, we could have some shadows that are only visible when you are inside a 
like an area that is lit by rays it is but again this is a question that we talked about earlier how much are we pushing this thing the level of optimization we're going with it in reality it is the whole difficulty of any type of production when do we stop when do we go to something else so for example it's a bit silly but on this very corner map we could pass spend a monstrous number of hours <laughs> Are we able to add some sort of um, waterfall that drops from the island? Would I really like to see what Ikalim would look like? Uh, some sort of waterfall that drops from the edges to reinforce the celestial aspect of the whole area. What well, we wanted to move or uh, tiny little uh, improvements and enhancements like twigs to make uh, other things that we've thought about that is hilarious is making uh, 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 make meteors or um, celestial rocks slam against the map so we have um, the waterfall animations are already done for Aquadala Aquadala is magnificent for those who have seen it the Crossmonaut was it then when we showed it? yeah that's when we showed Aquadana. There was a beautiful attention paid to the water element and how we have behaved. So when we moved to Pandana, we have sort of used it as the basis for a lot of other elements that we can just copy later on. So we've really put in the work for Aquadala so that we can make it easier to port that and replicate it across pretty much everything. Like a little canvas almost. Here, let's have a look at the waterfall thing. I'm just improvising here. Should I put it in ISO here, do you think? Yeah. <laughs> what if there were waterfalls everywhere in Ankana that comes out of everything? Ah, no judgment, but this is not meant to be happening in the game in general. Ankana does not have any waterfall. Do that in four seconds, come on. <laughs> the network architecture will it be changed in unity once the port in it is something that we are thinking about uh, at least a year and a half we've been working on it so yes there will be lots of modifications that will uh, happen some are doing uh, have happened already and only the spirit of the unity port in the biggest topics that we needed to smooth over and sort out and i'm talking about features client side and things like that have already been done there are other modifications that we want to to bring, like uh, uh, like a server transfer of a character on the spot rather than having to wait for uh, cutoff dates on a certain day of the week. So the, there are lots of uh, features and enhancements that we want to bring, and it's just a matter of time before. Is the game going to become magnificent? Yes, it will be. So what we've done with the tree earlier, we've uh, replaced it with a tree that was cut up in multiple elements. So we've done the same thing with the Aquadala waterfalls. They were worse than uh, the trees to cut up from a single image. Look at that. Oh. In, in one click, I can put my Aquadala waterfall on the spot. <laughs> it violates my eyes when you place it like this in conjunction with Incarnum. But it's here. We can note uh, the difference between the areas and you can see the passage of time there in terms of design. So here we had some uh, fishing rods that were prepped to also take the wind and interact with it. They're just like trees. They move when the element of wind reaches them and it creates just like earlier the same effect. I'm already seeing questions come about the unity anything to do with the unity porting servers and things like that here today we are focusing on the ld uh, so design and it is just an opportunity for us to communicate with um, the design team really this is what this is all about if i add oh if if even if you add a boat it can be affected as well with the wind <laughs> Whenever you want the space boat expansion, just let me know. I'm ready for it. <laughs> K 
could you add a little bit of velocity so that it is moving on top of the water? <laughs> uh, I see that we've entered the phase of uh, unlimited ideas. Oh, and we forgot to activate the tofus. They are here. They've not gone anywhere. <laughs> With all the work we've done today on this map, it would be a bit of a shame to keep the tofus like this. Um, do you foresee some areas where they're all dark and our character brings light around it? And I'm thinking of uh, some sort of dungeon that is dark. Yes, we're thinking about that. It's difficulty. It's difficult, but it's just a technical aspect that we can smooth over. It's something, it's part of the optimization we talked about earlier. So for night mode, that has been mentioned many times, we have Fire Dala already done in a night mode. So uh, we've mentioned this earlier, but in Bonta, we've tested having um, some maps with night modes. But there are some areas that work very well with the night mode and others not so much. So we, we are testing stuff like that. Let's get the boat out of here. Shall we change map? Shall we change map completely or just to remove the elements we've added here? Uh, the animation looks uh, a bit jittery persona because they have the wind increased and they're showing as well. Can we know? It's. Uh, it is. Can you tell us what the percentage of the maps you've already done and finished? It's a really difficult one to answer, but here, for example, we are at the stage of adding the wind to the entire maps of the game. So potentially we might have a very, very beautiful percentage that we can tell. Kanya, for example, 20%. Mm. So initially they are planning to do about 25 to 30% of the maps to do this level of effort into animating them. But the wind is coming very quickly to everything. Uh, we had a pass where we have done one map per area to see the feasibility of that map in the area. And now that we've validated stuff, it's just to, it's just a matter of applying that onto the other. And the idea that we want to give you here, for example, in economy is we've adopted this idea. Once the precepts are done, the settings, parameters, the velocity, uh, the movement of rocks, uh, the background and how it should look like, we do one map. What does it look like in terms of time? So there are maps that can take entire day where it's very specific requirements. We want to put more time budget on that very map because it's so demanding. And there are others that are uh, like Amakana or Kanya that will be automated things like wind. And we will do the same thing with um, light, ambience. There are some maps that will take three minutes and others that will take an entire day. There are some maps that will, like Kanya typically, we will just go on top of them, make sure that the parameters are clean, everything's good, the movement of wind, uh, but most of the maps will be done in two, three days, the entire Kanya and Amakana. We don't want to get into too much detail about this because it's not very interesting for you. But what Mazu has said just now, there are areas like in Karnam, we really want to spend a lot of time because the beginning of the game, same for Astroop, because uh, you spend a lot of time when you start, so they require a lot of uh, attention because of their importance, how they mark your experience of early game. Same thing with maps, the zone, uh, the dungeons. We do, we're not going to do quick passes on those. We really want to take our time because you're going to spend a lot of time exploring them. You do them multiple times. So there are, there's not a universal answer. Not every map has the same effect. So I don't have one uniform answer. It depends on the map. And the, one of the most difficult maps for us in our experience so far, it was the Aquadala area, th largely due to the water and the application of the animations on, because the research took so many time to do V1 of Aquadala, one map of Aquadala, and see that it works all right. Yeah, and then we put it down, come back to it later. We could we could enhance it. We knew we could enhance it. And so there are some maps or zones that we keep going back to because we know that it could be better. We know that we when Unity is coming, so the bar is high, we want to do it good. So because we've talked about Night and Fire Dala, 
uh, the question that I had in mind was what area that we haven't started yet or you are the most impatient to get your hands on for me it was in Conum. it was the zone an area that has impacted me the most as a player I like the vibe the ambiance being able to do it is phew, it's amazing for me otherwise um, I'd really like to go back on Ephidria, Belladonna area, in order to uh, close the build and animation loop. I know it will be heavy because there's a lot of things. We can talk about, uh, uh, what is that called, a greenhouse, so there shouldn't be too much wind. But no, 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 we do want to pay special attention to the animations regardless of what big area it is. The big idea. Oh, he's got a different answer. A cat flippers. It's not me specially that wants to animate it, but I'd love to be part. I'm not the only one, but I'd love to be part of it because there's a lot of uh, movement potential. There's a lot of um, tiles, uh, but there's also I, I. I've already mentioned this, but I've already done most of them. The subsephokia. But let's let's not go back there again. <laughs> the submarine maps were sort of some of the very first ones i've started with those on first try how can we make uh, the algae move and stuff like that i've run my test there so he started there uh as far as a new area i don't know what eclipse there is something to do the zeloria maybe i haven't had the chance to talk too much about that but as soon as we finish the stream we'll go and talk about that or visit it rather Ah, somebody in the comments mentioned that the lanterns are not synchronized and that rubbed them off the wrong way. Uh, they mentioned that. <laughs> <laughs> are you going to completely redo some areas visually like you've done with Bont and Brackmar, like Kanya, for example? Kanya, I've talked about it a lot recently. We have a lot of things planned, but a, a revamp is not a good word. We have some things planned around the area, things that we want to bring to it. Uh, the same question getting asked again about day and night mode. Is it in the plans? No. Do we want it to be? Yes. I can't tell you exactly when it will happen. But it's something that we want to come back, return to at some point in the future. We have the tools for, for the most part, at least on the LD side. But we just need to coordinate the, the cycles could be done properly so that they are uniform and dynamic across the client side and the visual aspect as well. After that, we had two potential things that we wanted to show you. The first one is going on a map for Incarnum, where there were very, very little images. So we can show you before the cut, after the cut, so you can uh, sort of get the idea about the workload involved in cutting up one image into something that can be moved independently. And something completely different from Incarnum. So the chat is choosing one map in Incarnum before after. And chat guests should choose the other one. I really need some water. Uh, should we show everything right now? Or is it not a good idea to do that? Uh, Wormlord, there are some good things to show you in that area because it's pretty and nice. So, on a first time, I wanted to show you. Uh, will items that carry uh, um, dynamic things on them, will they be modified as well to behave and uh, be animated like uh, shields with a guild? The emotes, for example, will have to be completely redone. They, they will become something else. It's a big project because we need to reanimate all of them from the beginning. For the equipment pieces, we really, really have to do tests. But yeah, it would be really cool to apply to extend the animation to that sort of thing. So, this is the starting map of the beginning of the game. This is everything that has disappeared was one map, one image. I'm seeing the the tears of Denpi, the guy who had to do the cutting 
just so you can see how far we have come. This is the map that everybody arrives at. Everybody goes through this at some point. Boop. We can't animate this too much to see. Oh, sorry. Somebody's ringing. Be right back. I'll grab some water in the meantime. What did I miss? What did I miss? I didn't have time to get a proper glass, so I've just grabbed a tub. Why was it done like this? So the flash technology that they had at the time was not amenable to any sort of animation uh, down the road. So um, the fish in Sophokia and shadows and things like that, it was very, very tiny little uh, elements. Uh, but the flash client was completely knackered. It couldn't keep up with the time and things like that. So, for example, we tried to add the rain in Pandala and it went really bad. So the game was never amenable to be animated in the future. And now the porting towards Unity really does offer us the possibility to just take it up a notch and and make the game more beautiful, more fluid, more animated. And this is where we want to go back on some things that have been done historically in a certain way because that logic was lacking of animating things down the line. It was absent, what, 15 years ago? So we're gonna go back. Here I wanted to show you how uh, starting from one image, there are the graphics are having to remove every element, every piece and component of the image, having to cut it and separate it so that we can animate them separately and add things to them, move them independent of each other. And you can see the pillars as well that we can desynchronize to make them uh, move like the debris, the rocks, which allows us a better maneuver to make the map more attractive and nice for people. So just that's it for this point. Uh, question about the deco picto so the the uh, the cutting of pictures is an intensive thing that we have to revisit every now and then it goes through a big chain of graphic designers cutters and then LDs to validate it just so there are lots of iterations that happen before we have the final uh, cutting that we can animate and work with later on and here you can see lots of elements disappeared. Um, these are all particles that we will bring back so that they're not just static elements like the smog and everything, the light, everything in, in the background. We want to give it life back. Uh, there is a question about design here. It depends on which part we talk about. The creation. I'm not going to talk about this because it's completely independent, something completely different. But here we have new opportunities that have... Uh, emerged with Unity, uh, like uh, animating maps, so we can specialize on some elements of decor or the decor. Like we were talking earlier with Mazu, uh, the more you get close to some to a map with the volcano, uh, the, the more distortions you'll have in the air and things like that. The more closer you're to source of water or wind, the closer you hear it from one side of uh, your map. So it's not just the animation, the graphical animation, but there will also be some sound engineering that will come into the mix. Yeah. So yeah, we definitely do want a customized sound as well to general. There was a map in particular that really blew my mind. Uh, the zoom uh, level that you have changes the audio uh, feedback that you get. So it's not only just the zoom, it's your placement, your movement, where you are exactly. The footsteps that you'll be able to hear depending on where you step. So we have a lot of features that are coming, uh, sound related to accompany the design changes as well. Do you want to show the other area as well? Earlier I've seen Aquadala in the chat. Sure. 
Should we, should we do Aquadal? I see that the mouse is on it, but let's do it. Let me just zoom in really quickly here. It's more... It's better for you to see it like this while I fetch the files that I need. Which is a current if not water wind. That is a good one. <laughs> ah, if you're feeling like it, we can go to the... Um, Wormlord area, and I feel like that's going to surprise you. I think I think we should. It would be very important to show uh, the next thing. Oh. We have uh, we have gotten some inspiration from the movies and apply some of it to our game, right? Oh. I think with the compression, it's not the best thing. There's a texture that changed while I was loading the file. Ah, oh, there it is, you can see it. Don't, don't, don't pay any attention to the thing at the top left, we will hide it now. Boom, gone. Ooh, look at that. So here, when we were talking earlier about the tooling and presets, like here for example, the water falls the LDs have had it up the hilt for weeks to put it right in place for the cycle to be interesting to add little particles there the the foam for example at the bottom all these elements but it also made it so <laughs> we thought we thought they weren't clever to put their fish by the waterfall because they might lose it but that's just a little detail. But Aquadala has really, really allowed us to properly work on the water element and everything that comes with it. It was a titanic job on at the time, but now it has given us a basis that we can use for pretty much everything to do with water. And here you can also see the water movement on soft water, calm water, and if you change the pace of the water flow, then it adapts to it as well. And this is replicable in Sophokia, Madristan, and pretty much most of the areas that resemble each other or share elements in common or have commonalities across elements. So it makes the work easier down the road. Treasure hunts. There's a lot of things that will... Uh, should, we, should we go to Wormlord for a quick sec then? How can we say no? <laughs> It's going to ch the ambiance is going to change drastically. I I'm warning you. We have Dune that has recently come out. It's yeah, it will put you in the mood to go and watch it. Maybe we haven't started the Leocalypse and this type of areas, but these are areas that propose a lot of elements that can be interesting, like the war area, for example. We could make uh, the thing the whole more dynamic so the area is always at war there's explosions and fights happening at all times i don't know we're just thinking but that's the kind of thing that we can do right now to go back on uh, the ma fight maps so imagine if there is so much animation and things happening in the map and you're trying to focus on your fight it's just too much it's it's maybe a bit too much so it's a little bit like this that i define it so in essence so every map has its own vibe its own tentacle so these are areas that i imagine you take a lot of pleasure to work in it was a lot harder than we expected because there were so many elements to cut, uh, yeah, to do, to make organic movements like that is never easy. But there, there are some other elements that we want to enhance, little things that we want to tweak. This is what the tactical mode would look like. Uh, will the downloading of the game get heavier with all the maps? Yes, the game will get a bit heavier because of all the new maps, but we're always vigilant so that it's not an explosion to gain 
in, in the order of hundreds of gigabytes at once. We're, we're pacing ourselves and paying attention to things like that. Like I was saying about the size of uh, the project itself, we are always vigilant as so as it does not get out of hand and explode. So for example, uh, we don't want to cut more than more elements than we need to, but just take the example of a tree can be five, seven elements, but yeah. So yeah, we are paying attention to these kind of things to do with the weight of the game. So now let's calm these animations a bit. So this is all a work of rebalancing that will need to be done later. But you can imagine a map that is uh, like, well, essentially it's this. This is the worm lord area. This is what we have to propose for you. This is what it looks like. This is the tactical mode inside the fight. Like Milo was saying, for this type of map, we'll be hyper vigilant about at the level of the animations that will be at the borders, the edges of, so they don't, we don't want them to be noisy. So you can have a better reading of the tactical mode so you can focus better on the fight and have less stimuli coming from the edge that is not helping you in the fight. It's a really good question. Do we have any areas that are well parametered? And then he asks another question. Are there any areas that we can do a before after just so we can see the scale of what you've done? Um, it was Aquadala. Aside from that black box that you saw, but the map functions very well. How about... Let's do... Let's do a quick Aquadala before after that we've promised, because we want to show you. Shall we show uh, uh, Zelorium or not? We are, they are tight for time, but they want to show a lot more than they've done now. But we need to see a before after and then a five minutes of Q&A. Yeah, he is very conscious of time. Holy shit, we're nearly two hours. Ah. Oh, wow. Oh wow. You can see the water movement. This is this fucky animation. You can see the little boat that follows the the current power. We've done all the plants. This is all finished. This is the finished. Yeah. So you can see the plants move on the right side. You can see the hanging fish, the flags, everything. This is this was the before. This is after. You can see before and after. This is what we have now if you're logging to. And this is what we're playing with. <laughs> this is what you have, this is what we have. But this is what you will have very soon. This is the current Sophokia and this is the difference. It's a massive difference. You can see... It's something that is insane, rather. Every map will be windy, Adibia. In reality, the stream is nearing its end because... Uh, we have planned a maximum two hours, but we are dangerously nearing it before um, before we get kicked out so they can use this space. If you have any questions, we can do a little uh, a little five minute Q and A. If you have any in the chat, and then we s we'll enter the end of the stream. Will there be a time where both clients are compatible? Yes. But then we will have, uh, it's, it will be doing the beta version where you both have the Flash client to play your game and continue. And also the Unity one, which is a different client altogether that you have to access in order to play the beta. We have a, a question about the looks of character that they've shown us, which brought a lot of comments. Um, they are preparing a um, report that they will be making available, an article to talk about the character's look and stuff like that. Brakmar, please. I've seen you asking about Brakmar. We have a colleague that is working on it right now. She's doing a fantastic job of it. Uh, he's having a lot of fun. It's his favorite area, so he's definitely on it right now. 
uh, five years after the last uh, change, may may maybe three years, three years after the last change. I think it will be really, really, really cool than we see right now. Oh, will the houses in Suffolkia be subject to the wind as well? This is, oh, this is why we're fighting with the LDs. Uh, ah, the, the level of animation people are being, uh, are asking them is insane. Like the smoke coming out of a house. We want it to follow the wind as well. Yes, of course, the, 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 there has been things in the past where if, if you find the lack of wind, then uh, you can blame it on the LDs. <laughs> The boat animation. Characters right now cannot be on elements like boats. So it's a bit complex to explain. It would make things very weird. Like if you stepped on a boat and then it, uh, it's a Pandora's box that we're not opening now. There are not interactions so there won't be any animation to worry about for now. But don't worry, everything will move. Oh, Maju, you're expected to go back and do some XP. There's a team waiting for you to log in. <laughs> the animations will be great. Don't worry, the disco will be good. Is there always wind or will there be periods with non-windy? Yeah, this is something we're thinking about. As a general rule now, there will be a minimum of wind pretty much everywhere. Just to reinforce the calm aspect of Dofus, the vibe. And if the hyperdynamic aspect is released immediately as Unity, yeah, that there might be periods where you might it, it's not as windy. You'll just have little movements in the um, leaves and stuff. Um, this, the resolution of the game is something that we'd like to uh, enhance and better over the long period, over the long term. But it is something that would be amazing to actually get sorted. Yeah, 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 we want to move on uh, some sprites and pictures that are of a better definition. Uh, here I wanted to... We want to... With Unity, we just want to bring more clarity and enhance the looks of things. I'm, I'm finding it really hard to speak. I can't find the right word. Um, I have the impression... I have the impression that it's much neater, at least on the feel. It's not as much in real changes, but the looks of them looks much better, sharper overall will tot be on unity i don't know what he's asking there when am i gonna revamp to be determined it would be really nice for now we really are just focused on the animations for unity we're not talking about area revamps or anything like that it's definitely not the priority yeah to go back to the LDs and be like, go on, revamp new areas while they're animating pretty much everything in the game. <laughs> they're looking forward to, to animate a Machina. They're, 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 they're looking forward to the revamp of a Machina. Oh, game development wise, it is a minefield because lots of quests converge there. So. It's not just a graphical change, revamping the area, it's a big, big project. Uh, also, uh, depending on the availability of other teams, you can ask for changes. But for game developers, we have to, to work together. We clearly don't have time to allocate for this right now. Question about pleasure and suffering. There's... Uh, Pleasure from 0 to 100 and suffering from 0 to 100 and clearly every uh, The first map that we've done and there's 400 map oh. So a canyon will not be terrible to optimize because of the similarities between maps once we work hardly on a couple of them Will the emotes be completely removed? No, 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 no. Emotes will not be removed. It was just a question that was asked earlier. And emotes will all be redone following a new type of animation to be stylish and better in Unity. So they are better than what we have right now. The only thing is we haven't started yet. We are focused on characters 
we're working on our 19 characters times 2 so we can read that's our next top priority so we're not thinking about emotes for now has there been any problem when you've used linux uh linux on uh, unity nope we didn't have any problem we were worried that with some tools and techniques that we've used that it would cause problems but nope we've tested it, it looks all right fits correctly and works well should we speculate on the um fireworks no go ahead if you want but We will have some special fireworks 20 years that you could blow up on um, on the true fair. Oh, and with Unity, we could add some particle systems that will enhance the aspect of the game. Mm. There's so many things to do. It's a feature that they're developing. I don't know what the name of it. I missed it. The cycle. the night and day cycle okay 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 so they have uh, they've not yet introduced anything like that but they've reworked the areas that are dark or white so for storms so what is it called a wimey we have worked the sand storms and things like that we have we're not forgetting anything we're working properly on uh, the details fps please FPS guys, please. The frames per second on Unity. What it will it look like? Now we will go up to a bit more than 60 if we need to. We haven't capped anything. This is like optimization. Should we put a cap around 30, 50 and just completely leave it open until whatever? There's also the synchro vertical question. 30 or 60. On questions like this, the objective right now is to make sure that the Unity version rolls as well, at a minimum, as well as the Flash one. But whether we limit it or not, yeah, that's going to be something that we will have to discuss a lot during the beta. That's what it will be good for, to discuss things like that. See the difficulties, the possible optimization areas on some sort of settings more than others. Because there will be demands and uh, requirements from the community specific ones so that's why the beta will start this summer around august in order to have a very long testing phase so we can have the best possible version during the release uh, a human being does not see any more than 24 fps but uh, even if we propose 144 we won't see all of them we'll see we'll see we'll see Oh, breathing. What do you have any novelty? That's a completely different topic. It's best to bring a game developer to discuss that rather than. No, are you guys. Do you touch any of it? No, 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 no. No. We'll have a different intervention team to talk about breathing. I've seen a different question about animations and their activation and deactivation. There will be an option to deactivate, like a toggle that you can. Um, to, re to reduce whether in or out of fight so so it should be um lovely for you but in terms of performance if there is a necessity it will go towards helping the most modest builds but it is an option that we have planned well not because we're generous but because we're like it's sort of a necessity for people Will it be available on the tablet, Unity? No. No, no, it's just PC for now. A live for the next Unity live? I have nothing to give you for now, but it should arrive in a few weeks, the date, the announcement. On the first, on a first uh, basis, the one thing I wanted to go back on is to bring an article on the looks of characters and things like that. That's the, our top priority. We've talked about w with our teams and we want to start that as the next step right i think that the questions are starting to get repetitive and i think that we can end the live on that one thank you very much all for coming
I hope that you guys on the chat loved it because it's an exercise that is unique. Very first time we do things like that, that will show you during the live how we work.